So today we will have a look at a few creative uses of side chaining in the modular environment, a few ways we can achieve this as well, and basically using the amplitude of one signal to affect a different signal, sometimes also its amplitude, sometimes different parameters. Again, this is a modular environment, so we can use this in all sorts of different ways. And the most basic example of side chaining is using a kick to side chain a, a sort of a bass, right, to make more space for the kick drum. So here I have a kick drum and a bass. Right, and I want that whenever the kick drum plays, the bass, the level, the amplitude of the bass will go down. So the first thing we can do, the easiest, is use dedicated modules. Here, for example, I have Oppressor from Flag, which is great for side chaining. Right, so again, here I have the kick and the bass. Right, the bass is going through um, Oppressor, and now if I send the kick drum to the key input of Oppressor, Right, and I can change the parameters, so how quickly this will happen, if I take the attack down and how, by how much. Right. We can hear that the bass, the amplitude, the level, the actual volume of the bass goes down whenever the kick drum plays. And again, this is the most basic example, just to make space for the uh, bass drum or the kick. Right, of course, there are other modules we can use in VCV and also a few modules in um, hardware. So, for example, here there is Comp2 from Squinky Labs. Again, it has a sidechain input. There is a, the Dynamo compressor from uh, Nischi. It has also sidechain, uh, stereo sidechain input. There are also two from a video you can experiment with. And there are also a couple that have also CV inputs, which can also be quite interesting. So, Pressor from Bog Audio and the Manic Compression compression from a Frozen Wasteland. As you can see, it has many parameters and uh, everything has a CV input, which can be quite interesting for getting all sorts of different rhythmic results. So you'll see this in a second. Um, again, also in hardware, there are uh, modules that have built-in side chaining, like the w, uh, WMD muscle, there is the Hex Inverter Mutant Hot Glue, uh, Androfin's cockpit, and also even in 2HP, you can get a compressor that has a side chain input. This is the 2HP comp. Right, so here I have a couple of examples. Um, I have here again a kick drum. In this case, it's sequenced from the gate sec 64. Right, and I have a bass with kick all. Kick all is great also for bass sounds, not just for kick sounds. Right, and uh, you can see it's going through the manic compression, and I'm using the um, kick drum to sidechain this bass. Let me solo this. Right, so this is now just the bass, and you can hear the rhythmic result we are getting, first of all, from the side chaining with the kick, but also I'm modulating here the ratio and the threshold, basically by how much this will this side chain uh, will happen. Right, so with the kick drum. So you can get really interesting results, especially in modular, where you can modulate everything. Another interesting thing I like doing is side-chaining uh, hi-hats, right, to a kick drum. Now here I'm sending the hi-hats first through a delay to add even more meat to the sound, so to speak. And only then I'm side-chaining it, in this case, with the minibar from Bido. Again, it has, uh, it's a compressor that has also a sidechain input, so it will sound like this, maybe I'm solid. Right, you can hear this pumping effect. Right, this sort of uh, movement in volume. So again, probably the easiest way to get side chaining is by using dedicated modules, but there is another way I want to show you, and that is by using inverted envelopes. Right, so here again, I have a kick drum and a bass. Right, again, I wanted the bass, the level of the bass in this case, the volume will go down whenever the kick drum plays. So I'm sending this bass through another VCA so I can control its amplitude over time, right? 
And I'm going to use an envelope to do this for me, but it's going to be inverted. So instead of bringing the voice with the gate, it will take it out with each gate. So again, the gate I'm going to use it will come the, from the same gate that the kick drum is getting because I want this to happen whenever the kick drum is playing. So I will use the same gate to trigger the envelope, right? Now, this is the envelope. Uh, let's say it's the red trace on the scope. Right now, this is not good enough because this will basically be this here, so the bass will play together with the kick drum. Right, this is not what we want. We want an inverted envelope that will take the level down together with the kick drum. So for this, we can use an attenue verter. Here I have the dual attenue verter from Befaco, right? It's available also in hardware. You can use any other attenue verter um, that you like, right? So I'm going to send the envelope first through the attenue verter. I'm going to use a blue trace in this case, right? And now I can invert this envelope. You can see this on the scope, right? Instead of going up, it's going down. This is not good enough for us because if I send this to the VCA, you can see nothing happens because this VCA and many other VCAs start working at zero and go up and will open with positive 10 volts. In this case, we have it going down to negative 10 volts, so nothing will happen to the VCA. So what we need is a way to push this envelope up so it will start at zero and will go up to positive 10 volts. And this we can do with the offset control. Um, I believe all, if not uh, almost all attenue verters have also an offset control, right? So you just have to push this up if I turn this to the right. Right, you can see what happens. Now the blue trace starts at zero and goes up to positive 10 volts and also the VCA opens and now we get this. Right? With each gate, instead of the envelope opening the VCA, it will close the VCA because again, it's inverted. And this is another interesting way we can create sidechain. Of course, in this case, the envelope itself will control the sound, right? So I can make this shorter or longer, right? And you can really shape your sound. Also here, if you have CV inputs, you can also modulate things. Now in VCV Rec, I'm sure also in hardware there is something, but in VCV Rec there is a dedicated module that has this dedicated inverted uh, output. This is the DADSR envelope from Bog Audio. It has an inverted output that is not only inverted, it's also pushed up, so it will start from zero and go to 10 volts. Right, so if I trigger this, you can see that whenever I trigger it, it goes down, so it will duck, it will lower the volume or amplitude of a signal right, or other parameters that we will see in a second, right? So here I have another example. Here I have a kick drum, the main kick drum with Tremor 2, right? It will sound like this. It will play every now and then. Right, one more time, let's wait for it. Very nice, so this is the main kick drum I'm using here. Now this is going to Plateau, which is a reverb. So I'm sending a copy of the kick drum to Plateau to get a nice reverb sound. This is going to a VCA. I'm using punch here from Vult to add even a bit more saturation and basically also to uh, being able to control the levels, this amplitude of uh, the reverb. And I'm using this um, envelope from Bog Audio. I'm using the inverted output to basically side chain the reverb to the kick drum. Now there's another thing going on here. Let's listen to this first. Right? So the level of the reverb goes down whenever the kick plays. And I'm also here using the envelope to change the diffusion of the reverb. So if you listen, you will hear it starts as a sort of a granular delay sort of, and then becomes slowly a reverb. Right? So you don't have to sidechain only amplitude, you can sidechain or use this inverted envelope for many other uh, parameters. Here, for example, I have another, or I have a sequence with the FM operator, basically a sample and hold sequence, right? So a random sequence going through a delay. 
right? And after the delay, this goes uh, to another punch, again, a stereo VCA, and I'm using, in this case, an inverted envelope with dual attenuverter that I used, right, to bring the levels of this um, sequence down, so it will sound like this. Right, so the kick drum plays, the levels go down and slowly come back up. And we also chords with plates or macro oscillator too, right? In this case, it's going through a filter and some chorus with the electric ensemble from Flag. And again, I'm using this um, envelope from Bog Audio with the inverted output. Again, it's ducking the level of the chords, but it's also changing the filter so the lower the volume the darker the sound again this is modular we can use this signal in many different ways and a filter is a great way also to change the timbre of the sound over time so those are the chords Right here I also have noise with noise plethora from Befraco. Again, I'm using this inverted envelope from Bog Audio. Right, this is in this case controlling only the filter, so it will only close the filter, which will be a sort of a level control and timbre control in one. And I'm also using the regular envelope just to change the parameters here. Right, so again, the kick drum plays, everything goes down. Here I have a bass sequence with a percussive vibration and the Euclidean sequencer. Right, and uh, the percussive vibration has an additional envelope, right, that I can trigger externally, so I'm triggering, triggering it with the same um, trigger from the kick drum. Right, and this is controlling the decay of the bass, so the decay will go down, the decay will be really short whenever the kick drum plays, so it will sound like this. So another level of complexity is with using an envelope follower that will follow the amplitude envelope, the actual volume of a signal, and will output control voltage accordingly. Of course, the advantage here is, is that unlike when using an ADSR module, for example, where the levels are always the same, here it will again follow the volume of the incoming signal. So if you have velocity, if you have all sorts of different changes, you will get an envelope that will um, show those changes as well. Right, so here I have a kick drum, and in this case I have also velocity changes, right, so we can listen to this maybe if I take this down, right, and this is going to an envelope follower, in this case I'm using the one from Bog Audio, if you're using, uh, if you're in hardware, you don't have an envelope follower, you can use something like Rampage, for example, or I'm sure also Math can do this or uh, you can use also a slew limiter as an envelope follower. Right, but you can see here on the scope, this is the control voltage we are getting. This is the actual amplitude of the kick drum, right? And you can see it sometimes it's higher, sometimes it's lower. So this is the advantage here when using an envelope follower. Right, and now again, because this uh, signal starts at zero and goes up to 10 volts, right, if I use it now as it is, to open the VCA, right, this is not the result we want, so again I'm using an attenuverter just like before to invert this envelope and also to offset it up, right, so I'm inverting it and offsetting it. Right, and now we get the bass is side-chained to the kick drum, but to the actual movement of the kick drum, to the velocity changes as well. 
Right, so again, an envelope follower will follow the volume, will follow the envelope, uh, the volume envelope of a signal and will output control voltage accordingly. And by inverting this and offsetting it, we can use it also to sidechain. Right, so here I have a few more examples. So I have here um, kick all as a melodic voice. Yes, kick all from Befaco is much more than just a bass drum module, right? So let's um, unmute this. Right, and I have um, decay changes here. I have also velocity changes, right? So the sound really changes over time. It's not just static. Right, and an interesting thing you can do um, with sidechain in any place, not just in the modular environment, is to sidechain effects, right? And give more space to your voices. So here, for example, I have a copy of this voice going to a delay, so it will sound like this. Right, but you can hear that the delay is sort of swallowing this voice and we get a sort of a mushy result. Right, so what we can do is we can sidechain the delay to this voice, so whenever the voice plays, and also according to its velocity, because we are using an envelope follower in this case, the delay will go down. So again, if I just use this signal that you can see here on the scope, this is the signal from the envelope follower. Right, if I just use this signal as it is, this is not the result we want because it will bring in the delay together with the voice, with the voice. So what we want is to invert it and offset it, right? Just like we did before. Invert and offset. If we listen just to the delay. Right, you can hear that the delay, the level, the actual level of the delay goes down together with the velocity, with the changes of the voice, right? So it gives a bit more space to everything. Again, this is without. And now with. Right, another interesting thing you can do is, I have here I have here a sample, you can use also field recordings in all sorts of different ways. I have here a sample of just waves. Right? And I'm going to use this, first of all, also as a voice, but also to sidechain another voice, right? So if I mute this, what I'm doing here I'm using a filter bank, this one is from Bog Audio. A filter bank is basically a collection or a bank of filters. We have here low pass, here we have high pass, and then we have four band pass filters, each in uh, different bands. Right, basically dividing the signal into different frequency bands, and we have access to each of those bands. So what I'm doing, I'm using only the highest band. I'm not using all of the signal. I will uh, show you this. Right? I'm using only the highest band. This is exactly the same sample. Right, and this uh, filter bank has a, an expander in VCV rack. I'm sure also in uh, hardware there are uh, modules like this. Um, so it has an expander, an envelope follower expander. So you can take an envelope, the, en the amplitude envelope, the volume envelope of each of those bands, right? And here you can see this on the scope. Again, this is just this band, this higher band. And I'm using this again, inverted and offsetted, or in this case, it's not offsetted because I'm using it uh, for a filter, but again, it's inverted. So when the wave goes, the level of the wave uh, waves go up, the level, or in this case, the filter will close and will close this uh, sort of drone voice, drone voice I have here with bleak. So let's listen to this. Right? You can hear the level changes. And again, those are waves, something really organic that you can use. You can just load field recordings and use them to control 
signals in all sorts of ways. Right together with the other voice we had before. Right, and again in this case I'm not using the whole signal. This is the um, another advantage of using an envelope follower. You can use exactly the frequencies you want to get the envelopes from. Again, so here I'm not using all of the frequencies, all of the audio. I'm using just a certain band, just the volume amplitude of a certain band to control a different signal. Right, now, another thing I have here is a bass. I hope you are ready for this. Oh yeah. <laughs> this is Psych, of course, from Instruo, going through a filter. Right, and I have here, I have here a bass drum. This is a Squonk from Nischi, sequencing the kick from VCV. Right, and you can hear there are changes in velocity, changes in decay. And this is going to an envelope follower and you can see the result here. You can see the complex envelope we are getting that is following again the volume, following the signal, also the decay, the whole volume, the whole amplitude of the kick drum. Right, and this I want to use to sidechain the bass, but I don't want to sidechain like we did before the volume of the overall bass. I just want the bass frequencies of the bass, the lower frequencies to go down. So also here, let me solo just the bass. Also here we can use um, a filter bank. So, right, so I'm going to send this bass first to the filter bank. And now again, I have control over the different frequencies or the different bands of this voice. So I can take down just the lows. Right? And like this, I can also side chain just the lows. So, so here, instead of lowering the overall volume of the signal, we are lowering the volume or the amplitude just of certain bands. So that the main bass sound, the higher frequencies will still stay there unchanged, but the lower frequencies, the bass frequencies will go down. So also here again, we have to invert and offset this envelope. So in this case, I'm using offset from Bog Audio which is also an attenue verter, right? So I'm going to lower just those two bands and you can hear it. Right, and if I open the filter, you will hear the high frequencies are unchanged. Right, it's, it's just the lower frequencies that are being side-chained and making space to the bass drum. hear this movement in the bass frequencies, this pumping. And again, because I'm using an envelope follower, right, you can see again the results here. Because I'm using an envelope follower, this will not be just like with an ADSR like we did before, that the levels will go always down the same. This will have sort of a more complexity to it, right? It's more interesting. You can hear the rhythmic movement of everything pumping. Right now, another thing I'm doing here, if I will solo the kick drum again, I'm sending the kick drum, a copy of the kick drum, to a delay and a reverb. Now again, also here, I'm going to sidechain those effects to give more space to the kick drum, if this is how it sounds like before. Right, way too much. Right, so first of all, I'm going to sidechain the delay, and then I'm going to sidechain the wet amount of the reverb. Right, and again, you get a much more complex sound, much more interesting, more layers.
So again, we are in the modular environment. So why not sidechain also modulation, sidechain control voltage? We don't have to do this only with audio. We can sidechain also control voltage, right? So here, for example, I have an LFO. This LFO is going through a VCA again, so I can control its amplitude over time. You can see this here on the scope. And here again, I have this uh, DADSR module from Bog Audio with the dedicated inverted output. So if I'm going to use this to sidechain the LFO, you can see on the scope, we get quite an interesting result. Right, a more complex wave shape that again, we can use in all sorts of ways. I have here a few examples. You can get really, really interesting and fun rhythmic results like this. I really encourage you to experiment with this uh, technique. Right, so here I have a sort of, a, let me close this modulation, a sort of a drone with bleak going through tangents, which is a filter. Right, and I have here an LFO. This is a pulse wave going through a VCA again, so I can control its amplitude over time. And I have here again this inverted envelope side chaining. You can see the results here side chaining this uh, wave, right? This uh, square wave, this LFO. And I'm using as a trigger for this envelope, I'm using a sort of a ghost rhythm. There is no voice playing this rhythm, it's just for the side chaining. This is coming from the Euclidean sequencer. So you can get really interesting rhythmic results just for more stability in this case. I'm also resetting the LFO just so the results are even more rhythmic. But of course, you can experiment in all sorts of ways. So if now I bring this LFO modulation, listen to this. Again, this is a square wave LFO being side-chained. by this creating a whole new rhythm. Right, just for fun, I have here also some uh, hi-hats with uh, plates or macro oscillator too and some delay. But listen to this nice rhythm we get. Right, this is without side chaining. This is with much more complex and interesting, basically. Another um, example I have here, which is also quite fun. I really, uh, <laughs> really encourage you to try this. I'm sidechaining here pitch information. So I'm, I have a sequence sequencing the FM operator, right? The sequence is coming from the SEC3 and I'm sending the pitch information first before the quantizer, it's going through a VCA, right? And then to the quantizer. And again, I'm sidechaining the amplitude basically of the pitch information. And listen to this, what an interesting result. All sorts of trills and ratcheting and all sorts of different things just from this rhythmic side chaining. Right, this is without. And this is with. What an interesting result, seriously. So nice. Another example I have here is with energy. Right, again, I'm using an LFO. In this case, it's a saw wave. And again, I'm side chaining it to another rhythm. In this case, it's coming from the SEC3. Right, you can see the result here on the scope. Listen to those rhythms. Right, so again, side chaining in the modular environment can be quite fun, I would say. <laughs> lots to experiment with, uh, lots to explore. I hope you enjoyed this video and um, have fun. Cheers. <laughs>